Welcome to another video from Six Patterns. My name is Max. I'm Kevin. And today we are going to talk about uh, actually one of my favorite disease processes. It is fun. It's fun. It's exciting. It's like a it's like a it's like a hunt, a discovery hunt every with, with every case, and uh, and it's also often misdiagnosed. Right. Right. So this case got sent in, pathologist said, I have no idea what's going on with this case. There's something wrong with the airways, but I have no idea what's going on with this case. And it's patchy, he said, or so, she said. So maybe it's UIP. Yeah, could this be UIP? I don't want to get it wrong. So they sent the case out for consultation. So what do you think the imaging on a case like this, where we're looking at these sections of a surgical biopsy showing very discrete disease, what do you think a CT scan would look like? Well, if I was going to squint my eyes, Right? And imagine this in black and white. I would think that the CT scan would show a bunch of fuzzy nodules yeah. peripherally in the lung. Right. Uh, but not going all the way out to the pleura, because look at this pleura. The pleura is kind of nice and beautiful and, and spared. So it would be all of these tiny little fuzzy white nodules peripherally within the lung. That's what I would expect the CT right. scan to look right. like. So looking at this... Where do you think the abnormality is located from an anatomical perspective? It's got to be in the terminal bronchovascular bundle, right? right? This, is a, this is a centrolobular problem. Because all, th all three biopsies that we have here have multiple centrolobular regions, and every one of the centrolobular regions appears to be involved by whatever this is. We'll right. find out when we get to higher right. power. But an airway-centered disease that has what looks at low mag like some pink fibrosis. Right. So uh, at its basic level, it's an airway-centered fibrosing problem. Right. right. So in the list of possibilities, we're thinking chronic HP, we're thinking maybe some autoimmune diseases that have lymphoid hyperplasia around the airways yep. like Sjogren yep. uh, syndrome. So at, what, what other things would you think about? Maybe aspiration. Aspiration bronchiolitis. It's always a tricky diagnosis for the clinicians, and we're often the first to identify. Exactly. And the clinicians often don't believe us. Right. Because they said, well, I did a swallow study, and the patient isn't aspirating, so this cannot be aspiration bronchiolitis. And I asked the question to the patient, are you aspirating? And they said, absolutely not. <laughs> and you, you, we laugh at that, but they do ask pointed questions about uh, aspiration, such as, do you end up having bad coughing fits after eating? Some very... Uh, obvious and low sensitivity uh, questions clinically. Uh, aspiration can occur during the day, it can occur at night, it can be subtle, it doesn't have to be a violent episode, and we see cases where we will find food in the lung and our clinical colleagues absolutely refuse to believe that the patient's aspirating it's a true until, story. until they go back to the clinical record and see that the patient did have oral pharyngeal surgery five years earlier and is cured of whatever their disease was but now has new problems in the lung. And back pain and they're taking opioids. Exactly. So you've <laughs> got to really be able to, to parse out the clinical findings associated with aspiration to begin to put the puzzle together for the clinician. Exactly. So here we've gone to a little bit higher power and we can see this larger airway actually is distinctly abnormal. Yeah. And it's time now to do a closer look. I can hear the clock. That's right. <laughs> so this airway right underneath the epithelium, this is not normal submucosa, subepithelium of the airway, not. right? Too much stuff and it looks wiry. Edema, wiry, uh, collagen, inflammatory cells. I mean, this is distinctly abnormal. Right. So there's a lot of fibroplasia. Yeah. Can we say that? Yeah. Are, maybe this whole thing is a giant fibroblast focus. Associated with epithelium, Associated of, the with epithelium airway. of the airway. So maybe this is chronic hypersensitivity. It could be. Here in the middle of the airway, we have abundant mucostasis in the lumen with a bunch of inflammatory cells. Maybe it's infection. Right. Airway infection. That's the way the most infections get into the lung. So when we look out here at some of the smaller airways, we see similar changes, although they're less impressive because they're a little bit smaller, but abundant active fibroplasia yeah. around the terminal airway. You can see the artery here, so we're dealing with a bronchovascular bundle, a mixed inflammatory cell infiltrate, 
maybe a little bit of peribronchial arthmetoplasia and mucostasis. And some right mucostasis. So we have features of chronic smaller airways remodeling. We have central lobular fibrosis. We have active fibroplasia. I mean, all of these things. I mean, there's a lot of distinct abnormalities in this lung, and yet we don't see any granulomas. Right. We haven't seen any food. Uh, so we're kind of left scratching our head wondering what could cause this uh, this pathology. I might, if I got to a place where I couldn't find any of the things we talked about, I might put in my differential diagnosis, uh, airway-centered nodular fibrosis, and then make a comment about the things we've already talked about that could produce that. In other words, I don't have to solve the case, but I know what category it's in so I can help the clinician uh, work up the patient and possibly find an answer from a clinical perspective. Exactly. I mean, that would be, and, and what would you put at the top of your differential diagnosis based on this pattern of injury? I, I would have to say an airway center fibrosis from chronic hypersensitivity or aspiration. Uh oh. Just as I said it, Max, it looks like you have stumbled onto something, but I'm not sure that it's from this planet. It looks like a snake or something. A snake in the lung. And it's in the terminal airway, it's inside the airway. I can see epithelium around the edge. So this is, this looks like fibroplasia inside, like a polyp inside an airway. And inside the fibroplasia, I see multinucleated giant cells, and I see this foreign material. A piece of vegetable material. A piece of vegetable. It's like a piece of salad. Or celery. Or celery. Yeah. Or yeah. broccoli. Broccoli, legume, some legume. <laughs> it, it, thick walls, uh, kind of square and rectangular shapes. Maybe These cellulose. Can, and, yes, cellulose. So this is this can be frightening. Uh, you start thinking about parasites. If you're thinking of a parasite in the lung, first think about aspiration, aspiration. bronchiolitis with food material. Exactly. Now this biopsy at Lomag also, I, we need to comment, has a funny feature on the pleura. Look at the sure. tip of this wedge. Remember the wedge is from the peripheral lung where the lung forms this, this kind of an uh, uh, intersection. A point. A point, if you will. And at the point, we have this structure. Looks like an adhesion to me. An inflammatory adhesion that's not new. It's old. Yeah, an old adhesion with a bunch of capillary proliferation, a little bit of mesothelial cell proliferation. So something happened nearby this pleura earlier in this patient's history that led to that inflammatory fibrotic tethering. And what do you think that might be, considering what we've seen so far in this case? I think the patient probably had a more active inflammatory process related to the aspiration. Yeah, because the most common thing you get from aspiration is aspiration pneumonia, right. which looks like a low bar pneumonia with abundant neutrophilic inflammation. So that's probably what that adhesion is from. And these will heal, you know. Aspiration bronchiolitis will make nodules that come and go on imaging. So you get the, the localized aspiration pneumonia, it's not the whole lung, localized area, it heals over time and leaves you with nodules or the nodules that were present can become smaller. So waxing and waning nodules, think aspiration. Exactly. And remember, our clinicians, our clinical colleagues think that we have a terrible job recognizing these things. And that may be true that sometimes aspirated material is easy to miss, but the clinical services also have uh, are, are often refuse to believe that it's associated with aspiration. Right. So if you see something foreign like this, you know, s stay confident in your diagnosis that you're dealing with an aspiration uh, entity. If you don't see anything foreign and you see this pattern of injury, central lobular, a lot of chronic small airways remodeling, even in the absence of anything foreign, still strongly suggest chronic aspiration. Yeah. Okay, I think that, that sums up uh, chronic aspiration bronchiolitis. Don't forget to like us and put your comments uh, under this video.